Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to talk to y'all about marriage. Now, in today's society, we, as the children of the Most High, were dead, were dry bones, and we are waking up to the truth and coming out of the Gentiles' rule and their customs and their ways. So we rediscovering the ways of the Most High as given to us in that book that you pick up and read, brothers and sisters. Now, some of you have truly been saved and all of your past sins have been forgiven. Right? Things that you have done in their world has been forgiven. So I want to think of, want y'all to think about this. In their world, you went to their Sunday worshiping assemblies. You also stood before that Sunday worshiping pastor and some of you gave your vows right before that Sunday worshiping pastor and you exchanged rings in their ceremonies as a sign of commitment. Now, if any of you done your homework, you would know that that ring is a sign of Saturn, which is connected to Hashatan. So a lot of your marriages were based on Hashatan binding you in a contract with himself in his Sunday worshiping assembly. It don't matter if he was married once, twice, or three times, or four times. You went into a binding contract between you, your wife, and Hashatan. When you took that ring and you put it on each other's fingers in a ceremony of the heathens, and exchange your vows. And a lot of you want to sit there and say that the Most High has to honor that contract. Is that what y'all saying? But anyway, there are others who didn't participate in that type of contract. They did it a, a different way. They didn't exchange their vows in a Sunday worshiping church or assembly. They didn't exchange their ring. They didn't exchange rings at all in a Hashatan ceremony and con binding contract with himself involved. I know some of you never thought about this. But you need to. And you think the Most High is going to honor, respect, and love a contract you entered in with a heathen or a Gentile in a Sunday worship and assembly where you gave rings, bowing yourself to each other in a binding contract with their G.O.D. and not Yahuwah? You think he loves to honor idol worship? You think he loves to honor a binding contract between a man and a woman in Hashatan in exchanging of a Saturn ring ceremony?
Y'all not understanding. In this awakening, we are fresh. We are new. We are understanding what took place in their world that we participated in. And we're coming out of her. We're coming out of all of that. All the binding contracts that we done placed with them. And we're, we're being set free from those things. The truth is setting us free. Brothers and sisters. You are loosed from those binding serpent contracts that you made in their world. And I I know this is a subject that most haven't thought about at all and don't even understand and don't even know. You are free from those contracts, brothers and sisters, because the Most High does not want his wheat with the tares. He's come to cut off those tares. He comes to cut off darkness from you. Now, if, if, the unbelieving Gentile is willing, willing to allow you to put practice worshiping the Most High and come underneath the bond of the covenant in that household without himself getting in the way or still eating all the stuff he wants to eat in his world and participating in all those evils that he might not defile her, right? And maybe some day later on, he may accept all of it. That's fine. You, you, you get rid of the contracts that you made with the serpent in his ser- uh, serpent Sunday worship service. You get rid of those contracts and you, re- you, you, you get married for the first time again under the Most High. If that spouse is willing to do all of that. But if the Most High knows their heart. And he searches them thoroughly and he gives you the signal to cut yourself off from this person. You do it. You cut yourself off. And there's a lot of Hebrews waking up with the Most High is telling them to cut themselves off from this man or this woman. Cut yourself off. Put them away. Like he told us back in the day, he says, put them away. They will turn you from me and they will continue to be a burden, a oppression, and uh, be used by Hashatan to tear down your faith, to tear down your light that's burning within you. They will continuously do the bidding of who they serve in. The Most High don't want you to be like that, unequally yoked, bound, under bondage when he has set you free. So I know a lot of you read in the scriptures where it says the Father doesn't like putting away. And... uh, Of course he doesn't. He doesn't. And is it lawful for a woman to put away a husband? Well, what if the father was the one that said, put that person away? It must mean that You were never bound 
by a real contract that he ident- he identifies with in the first place. But if you want to continue to believe that in those Sunday worship assemblies, there was real binding going on between the father and those two that stood before the serpent pastor, you can go right ahead believing that. That's totally up to you. And if you went down to any courthouse and did the same thing, who was that person worshiping? Who did they worship that you just signed a contract with? Gave them binding authority over you. Now that you're awake, all that is dead because you're under the Father now. You know the truth and you done woke up and you have been restored, renewed. And he's telling you to separate yourself from the unequally yoked, the, uh, the unbeliever. Because you belong to him now. And he will take care of finding you someone. And he will put you together like he did with us in the past. And you will come under the binding of the contract the Father's way. He has his way written down on how to uh, do the contract of marriage or joining together of two souls. And brothers and sisters, I'm not making any excuses for anyone. If you done read and studied the book thoroughly, Some of you are waking up fresh. And you're finding out that you you done did something wrong in the Sunday worshiping assemblies by standing in front of them and telling them to bind, bind us in marriage between G.O.D. and J.C. Those entities, even though you were ignorant, the father wasn't. You think he's going to sit there and honor that? He's not. He's not going to honor your agreement, your vows exchanged with rings on, which is a vow between you and Ashatan, why do you think all these marriages go the way they go? Some of you still got those binding rings on your fingers. Research this, brothers and sisters. So I did this video just to explain something that you may not have thought of at all concerning this awakening and marriages that took place in those Sunday worship assemblies or even at a courthouse or even if you went to Vegas and got married in a chapel or something. You think the father was right there binding that thing? No. No. It was G-O-D there. And that's not the same as Yahweh. And if you did it in J.C. name, that's not the same as Yahusha. So wake up. Set yourself free from those entities, G-O-D and J.C. who bound your contracts so I don't know if y'all going through 
with your spouses or children or your family like I have went through with my own family. But I recognize and I see and I look back and I can see all the damage that was done to the families who got married underneath that. It start, may have started off happy and everything, but eventually it went sour. And that's not how the father operates when he binds someone. He pours out his love into the couple. And together they are bound in the contract through himself and they stay together forever to the end. As we saw many of our ancient ancestors were filled with the power of love from the father in each other and they stayed together and they were bound with the timeless love, the endless love. That is not the case with Hashatan's marriages. So people end up hating their spouses over time or settling on certain things, never knowing why is this like, like it is. What happened to the love, trust, togetherness, you know, and, and they get used to that normalcy some of you built up a normalcy in your marriage and you just can't get past a certain part to make it a eternal marriage because you, you won't be able to it's the way you bound that marriage and how you set it up through another entity an idol you set it up through an idol Y'all understand what I'm saying? And the father don't get down with idol worship and he's not going to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to honor this contract. What is that saying about our father if he does that? When throughout the whole book, he talks about idolatry. And we constantly getting in trouble behind idolatry, choosing other so-called mighty ones in place of him to listen to. And we think that the Most High has to honor all that. I don't think so, brothers and sisters. It's time to wake up to who the Most High really is. And he ain't going to honor all that mess. The Gentiles, that let them do what they do. They're a spittle to him. They're unequally yoked. They're, their contracts are void in his eyes. But he lets them do what they do. But he's focusing on his righteous ones. And he's waking us up. And he's saying, come back to me and my ways. And as you do that, yes. Sometimes a uh, significant other is one of the ones that has to get put away. Because the father not honor that idol worship contract you made. When you stood in that Sunday serpent assembly and exchange serpent rings to one another in a binding serpent contract. That's what it was. But when you first laid down with that person, that was when you were supposed to get married at that point, particular time before the eyes of the Most High. The first time that you laid down with that person, that was the time that you were supposed to do the right thing, but you didn't know that. You didn't know that. He understands your ignorance in that. But you continue to fornicate as boyfriend and girlfriend until y'all decided y'all wanted to bind this, this fornicated contract in front of a serpent witness and exchange that serpent Saturn ring. And y'all telling me the father is going to honor that? I just, I can't do that. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all on your own. I know he got written in the scriptures, but you got to think about it being done the righteous way from the very start. That's something the father would honor if you go his route. But most of us didn't know his ways. So how can you go his route 
when you don't know his ways. Most of us was taught to fornicate with this person, fornicate with that person, try to find the right one. And when you think you found the right one, after a time, you test them out. You know, you get to know them over a year or two. Then you come together in the Sunday worship and assembly and bind that contract before the idol G.O.D. and J.C. And you exchange those uh, Saturn rings to bind the contract between you two and the serpent. I'm sorry. All of that is made void in the eyes of the Father. And that's how he can sit there and tell you to put away this person or that person. You were never truly married in the first place in his eyes. Something that he would accept. Brothers and sisters. I hope this cleared up. That question. Of. Awakening Hebrews who. Are. Unequally yoked. With unbelievers. Whether it be. Of our own people or them. Why continue to live with the devil? The devil just going to do what he do. You got to look at it this way. The difference between a believer and an unbeliever. The difference between an unrepentant sinner and a repentant sinner. You think the father is going to allow, going to sit there and say, okay, I want you to stay in that serpent binding contract with that serpent right next to you. I want I want Hashitan to stay right there in, in your life and wreak havoc as you try to get yourself together with the Most High. I want him to come, come through that person and rip you apart. I want you I want you to stay bound. To Hashitan's contract. No, he's not. He's going to pull you away from that and pull you out of it. He's taking you out of it, out of her, out of all their, their ways and the crookedness and evils. So if you've been married once, twice, three times, You've been married more than that, actually. If you think about all the people you laid down with for the first time, that's just about, that's as marriage to the Most High. And instead of marrying, you, you cut that person loose and moved on to the next one and married them in a binding contract when you laid down with them. But you never married either, either one of them, so that turned into fornication. Some of you been what they call Kamala married to other um, other men and women. You know, you you didn't got with them as boyfriend and girlfriend, but you've been there for so long two, three, four, five years. It's as if you were married. But all that is is a long fornication. You know, uh, a longer time of fornication. The, the father is righteous. His first way is two virgins come together in an agreement to be together with a few witnesses there and then they are led to the, the the chamber to bind that contract between the two in blood where the male enters the woman for the first time and that blood is the hymen is broken and blood is spilled and that binds the contract of marriage. 
that's first the first thing the father honors and respects and will bind the two together himself you understand there if they're doing it his righteous way first now secondly if you're if you were raised in the ways of another nation and you awake and let's say you've been been with other people you didn't know these custom the ways of the most high you didn't know you've been fornicating you've been marrying other people and but when you wake up and he washes you clean of all those sins and errors and he wakes you up and say no this is the way you're supposed to do this now separate yourself from these people I'm going to send you somebody and you're going to do this thing the right way or he could tell you just be be by yourself and serve him. So there's a lot of you in these type of situations and you don't know what to do about it because you got certain brothers on here or sisters on here telling you you can't do nothing. You, you, you're you stuck. You're stuck in that bondage so deal with it. And I'm telling you, I don't think so. Not that I'm, I, I never been married. But I've been in long standing fornicated so called common law marriages before. In their world, we done bound contracts with many people, many partners. And you expect me to believe that the father is going to honor because you decided to go your way according to your self-righteousness, according to your self-thoughts and your world that you live in. He's going to honor that contract. You've been with the person for three years fornicating and then you decide you want to marry them. Not because you wanted to do right by the father, first of all, but just because you've been together long enough and you say you love that person, let's, let's go ahead and tie this knot. And then you go before the Sunday serpent. I think a lot of us need to put away insanity and think about this thing sanely and go over the scriptures. Get to know the righteousness of the Most High and how he does everything first before you comment, before you speak out of term. He's righteous. He told us how to do this from the beginning. If you knew his ways and you did in another way, you think he's going to sit there and honor that? You think he was going to accept your children as well and honor those children? Why do you think he told us to put away the Moabite women and the Midianite women? Because they would turn us from him they were raised in different ways. They didn't accept him. They were unbelievers. And the Canaanite women. Think about that. Why? You see, it seems like... He's turning on his word of marriage. When you marry someone, you take them as a wife and you have children. Or it would seem as if he's turning on his word when it's concerning even a Midianite. 
But remember, Moses married a Medianite, Jephro's daughter. He was a Medianite. But what was different? She wasn't going to turn him away. And they knew the ways of the Most High at that particular time. At least Jethro and his daughter or his household. But the other ones later on brought in all these other deities or what you call so-called mighty ones to worship. They brought in Baal, Peor, to curse the Yashualites. Moab and Median together. They worked together. And they started taking wives from them. And the father said, put them away. Why? Because they were unbelievers. Unacceptable in the eyes of the father. And he didn't recognize that union between the Yashualite and the Moabite and the Yashualite and the Medianite. He didn't recognize that as something he joined together, something he, uh, he would respect and honor and protect. He saw that as nothing to him, just as he says in scriptures, They are as spittle to him. They are as nothing to him. Y'all understand? Now, we got examples of this all through the book. Y'all think that the Most High would only tell the men in this day that all your sins are wiped and you can put away these wicked ones and that contract with the serpent but the women you can't you can't put away the contract with the serpent I don't care if you're awake you bound to that serpent contract and with that ring I don't care about your faith alone in me. You think the father going to say something like that? You think he's going to keep them bound who want to follow him? Look what he did for Ruth. That was a Gentile. You think he wouldn't do that for a Yashualite woman? You think he wouldn't have saved? She gave up everything. Her family, her people, her customs, her ways. She gave up all the entities that they worshipped in their land to go follow Naomi and her high power she served. And the father allowed her to come. And she married Boaz, who gave birth to Jesse, and Jesse to, I mean, gave birth to Obed, and then Obed gave birth to Jesse, and of course, Jesse gave birth to King David, a man after the Most High's heart.
He washed all those sinful deeds that she participated in before she met her first husband and married him and he died. You think he won't watch your sins clean? Separate you from evil, wicked people that he don't recognize? You think he can't take down the con contracts of that serpent in that ser serpent worshiping church you went into or even the contracts with the courthouses and chapels and other places you may have went to to put a ring on their finger. He can do that, brothers and sisters. So I hope that, I pray that y'all understand this. If you got any questions or comments, please put them in the description box, in the comment section below. And uh, I'll, get, I'll get back to you. Or email me your comments or questions. Email it to me. My email is in the description box below. Thank y'all for tuning in, listening, and um, in the future, I'll do a full lesson on this particular topic with scriptures and all of that. And with that, I'm going to say shalom.